Uh, welcome to the, um, the Friday webinar. Uh, today we're going to be covering Rohub 2.0, which was just released um, about three days ago. And uh, we're going to cover how to create a project in Rohub, um, both, uh, and then we're going to show how to work on the Rhodes and RoseSync application. Um, so by the end of this webinar, we will have a working uh, store, row store example, um, which I'm, you, you're probably familiar with. Uh, which will have synchronized data, and uh, we're going to show also how to uh, install this application onto an Android uh, emulator. Okay, so um, when you first create your Rohub account, when you log in, you're going to be presented with this screen, and uh, it's going to basically tell you to install Git on, uh, on your machine, uh, and then you'll add your public SSH key. Uh, the way that um, we're going to be adding uh, interacting with Rohub is using the uh, the Git command line tool. So you'll need your public SSH key to be able to commit code and pull code from Rohub. Uh, if you've used GitHub before, um, this is sort of a, a familiar workflow for you. Um, if you haven't used Git or GitHub before, I would highly recommend checking out um, some Git resources on the web. There's uh, several popular uh, books and, and sites on, on Git. Okay, so uh, in my machine here, I've already got Git installed, so I'm going to skip to this public SSH key step. So what I'm going to do is on my Mac, I've got this little utility called pbcopy, and I'm just going to copy it. Is it Brian? Yes, it's right there. Oh. Copy this to my um, clipboard. And then on Ro my Rohub account, I'll just go to SSH keys, add public key. And you'll see that it added my public key here. So the next step is I want to create a new project. And if you've, uh, if you've built the row store example before, um, this will be familiar to you. I'm just going to be walking through building that store example. So let's call this row store. And uh, in this new project dialog, you'll notice there's a checkbox here that's checked called generate apps. What this will do if this is checked um, is it will actually generate the Rhodes application and the RowSync application at the same time. So um, that way you don't have to, to generate them locally. So I'm going to create a new project. And you'll see it gives me some steps here for how to get started with my project. The first thing I want to do is go ahead and clone this. There's actually a typo here. And it used my uh, the key that I uploaded to authenticate with the Rohub uh, Git server. So, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the um, the Ro RoSync application as well. Oops, I don't need to copy the whole thing. Sorry. Okay, so now that I've got um, both of these applications cloned locally, I can go ahead and open them up. I'll just use TextMate to open both of them. And you can see it generated this Rhodes application with the familiar structure and a corresponding RoSync application. So what I want to do here is I'm going to add the product model to uh, the Rhodes application and then the product source adapter to my RoSync application. So go restore Rhodes product, give it a name, brand, price, 
ID and skew. And then I'm going to add a link to that on my front page. Link to products. And it's the product model. And we can try running just the row store product. Well, the first thing you'll need to do is to set your rows SDK. Uh, this is because when the project was generated on Rowhub, um, it used the uh, the generator that was actually in the Rowhub system. So when you clone it locally, you need to set it here. And then it's you can actually check this in. Um, it won't affect anything with your um, with your environment on on Rowhub. So go ahead and do this. We can run iPhone. And we'll see here. Hmm? Oh, right. And there's a new version of the, um, there's this uh, emulator I have to set because the uh, iPhone SDK 402 includes the emulator version. So I want to specify 4.0.2 of the emulator. Okay, so here's my application. Uh, you can see it has that products link. Um, everything here is just like the normal uh, row store product. And uh, well, I want to add sync now to this. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll enable sync in my model. And that's actually all I have to do on the on the roads application. You'll notice. Um, when you develop roads and roasting applications locally, uh, you need to specify this sync server for your locally running sync server. Well, in our case, we're not going to be running road sync at all on our machine. We're just going to be running it inside of um, inside of Rohub. So you notice that it was actually generated with this uh, link to our road sync application, which is not deployed yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the product source adapter now. Rose sync source product. You'll see my Rose sync application. I've got a product. And I'm in, I'm gonna go ahead and use the sample code here from our Git repository. Just in the interest of time here, so I can don't have to type it. Okay, and I want to deploy this to uh, to Rohub. So the way that Rohub works is it takes your um, your Git repository for your application and will use that to perform different actions. In the case of Rosync, we're going to take our Rosync application and deploy it. So I need to commit my changes back up to Rohub. In order to do that, I'll just do. Okay, so one, one question we have here is uh, how do you get the sync server URL if you're importing a locally developed app to Rohub? That's a great question. Um, so actually, uh, I didn't get to it yet in the, in the uh, console here. What you'll see for your Rosync application, there's this deploy box. I have, since I haven't deployed it yet, uh, it, it doesn't show any information here, but if you click on these little help uh, question marks, it gives you sort of instructions on the different actions you can do. In this case, for deployment, this is this would be my sync server setting. So I recommend if you're uh, as if you're look, following along and looking around in your Rohub account, check out these little uh, question mark icons for tips on the different functions you can do. There's also one here on building, which we're going to cover in a little bit. And there's also one on SSH keys. So if you're not familiar with uh, adding SSH keys, it shows you how to add them either on Windows, Linux, or Mac. 
Okay, so now that we've got some changes here, we want to commit them. Uh, I'm just going to use the git interface here. We'll do git add settings, sources, and spec. So now if I do a git status, I'll see all of these are committed to be, uh, staged to be committed. So I'll do git commit -m adding product source. And we'll do a git push. Great. And I actually want to do the same for my roads application. Go ahead and add app. And actually, I just need to add app. Great. Um, so now that I've committed my Rosync application, I can go ahead and deploy it, which is really easy. I just click on the deploy here. And this will take, the first time you deploy it, it will take up to about a minute. Um, the reason for that is it has to uh, bootstrap a server environment. Uh, we're actually using Heroku for this, so it sets up a new Heroku instance and, uh, set, and, and deploys your Rosync application with uh, Redis database as well. And you'll notice when, um, when the action that you're performing here is done, this little button will have a green LED light instead of a yellow. So I'll go ahead and start this up again, just to get it ready. Okay, so now you can see that our application is deployed. Uh, there's a link here to actually see the web interface. So I can go ahead and click on that, and there's my Rosync server. So if you're not familiar with the Rosync web console, um, you can go ahead and just log in directly. The default password is empty. And you'll see I've got um, a, the default license is up to 10 devices for testing. So I can see now I just have an empty Rosync application. So let's go ahead and log in. And by default, there's no authentication uh, business logic, so I can log in as anybody. Let's just call this test user and password. And go ahead and view. I should have products now. There's my products. And now if I refresh this page, I should see there's my test user. And I can actually drill down, see the device that connected, and I can go and see the copy of the data that this device has. So all this be would behave as a normal ROSYNC application as you expect. So I just want to mention here some other um, utilities. Obviously, you can undeploy. Um, but there's also two other actions here. You can restart your ROSYNC application. And you can also access the logs. So if I go ahead and look at the logs, uh, it'll take a few seconds to grab the logs. Let me see why that might have. Sometimes it doesn't log very much information here. There we go. So you can see this is the console output of my Rosync application. 
and you can also restart. <clears throat> so that is the um, that's a basic uh, working row store example. Um, so what I want to show now is the uh, is Rohub's build cloud. So what I can do now with my code is I can deploy it. Uh, I can build for a um, for either Android, BlackBerry, or Windows Mobile. And you have some different options here. Uh, the default version of your application is just the latest code in the master branch, but let's say you uh, made a tag of your code and pushed it to Rohub, you could build that tag as well. Or if you had a branch of your application like uh, 10 stable or something, you could build that. And the default Rhodes revision is going to be the latest uh, released version of Rhodes. Um, but you could also, if you wanted to build with the master branch, you could just build with the master branch there. But I'm going to go ahead and build with 2.0.3 because that's the version that I was using locally. And I'm going to build for Android 2.2. And this will take, uh, this, this will take about a minute. Um, it, it's, uh, it's actually building on our, uh, in the Rohub build cloud, we, it will build entirely from source. So that way you can make sure that if you're, for example, building from the master branch, you're always going to get the latest code. And again, um, I would recommend checking out these uh, these tool um, question mark sections. It'll talk to you about how to install for Android, for BlackBerry, or for Windows Mobile. So you notice for um, Android, there's only the Android SDK that you need to install. Uh, we don't uh, cover how to install it here, but if you go to the Android.com site and download the SDK, uh, you can easily install it. Uh, then for BlackBerry or Windows Mobile, you actually just need the simulator, so you just need to download a BlackBerry simulator from their site, or for Windows Mobile, you can download the developer toolkit, which will give you the um, the Windows Mobile emulators. And if, there's also more information on our roads documentation on the um, on Rommel.com slash docs. Okay, so our Android build is finished. I'm going to go ahead and download that. And if there was an error here, um, you would see a failed message and the, the build log as well. So. Great. so now I go in. I'm going to downloads. It's going to be... Let me see. And I'm going to just follow these steps here that the, um, the build instructions give me. First thing I'm going to do is create my AVD. Next, I'm going to launch the AVD and give it a minute to start up. <clears throat> 